Hey guys, Igor here once again. It's really hot, so I'm wearing a white beater. And uh, I've got another tutorial for you. Today, we are painting on top of photos, and I'm gonna talk about my process, the creative aspect of it, uh, kind of like choosing your colors, shading, lighting, all that good stuff. So uh, let's get right into it. So to get a little bit of a better understanding of what it is we're gonna do, here is an unfinished picture, which I probably won't finish, I'm just not feeling it um, so much of uh, me in Mexico and my pose is sort of pre pre planned for um, what it is that I'm adding but here is the picture without uh, without any additions without any painting on top and then what I would go in and do is draw a sketch layer have a fill drop some um, you know shadows based on what I see in the landscape and then I cut myself out and um, redid it and moved it to the top layer so that it's in front of the tentacles so that's that's a very very quick example here's a different example I posted this on my Instagram and if you zoom in you could see that I even went ahead and uh, just color picked some of the water and have it you know run up against my object to give it a more kind of fitting look to the actual piece and then finally, another piece, another picture of me in Mexico. And this one um, was a lot more recent. And I was actually already doing a video while working on this piece, but uh, I screwed up my audio settings and they didn't record, so I had to get rid of it. Uh, but yeah, basically, you can see that, uh, you know, I've got a couple squids on one layer, and then I have some background ones, and then the clouds, the smokestacks in the back. So today, we're going to be doing this photo. This is what I'm working on. And uh, it's just a cityscape picture that I took out of my brother's place. And this is the first example of what's possible with it. Um, but this isn't the drawing that I'm going to be working on. It'll still be the same image. So here's a, a quick sketch that I did of this giant alien. And uh, he's got three fingers and he's kind of like leaning towards the city. And you can see that um, it's very dim right now and when I will if I ever color him in he'll still be dim just because of volumetric uh, lighting but um, just the way that you try to put him into the scene is you think of perspective and uh, let's get back to the actual example that I will be trying to finish in today's video and uh, what I came up with was this cat that's sitting on one building and then he's got his little a yarn ball on the building across if I wanted to be I guess a little bit more um, I don't even know creative if that's the word I could have uh, came up with something instead of a yarn ball done like a giant roll of you know bridge cables or something because well there's no there's no yarn balls that big but then again no cat really comes in a size that large uh, so this is the painting all I did so far was this sketch after trying to come up with the idea. Obviously it's a very basic sketch and then I have a color fill for the cat and a color fill for the yarn ball. And this is where we're going to get started. I also did rotate the image so that uh, the sides are no longer white and it basically cropped it. But importing it from my camera uh, kind of did this weird little thing where it would only import it sideways and it would have these ugly uh, white sides so you can't you can crop it after you're done painting but I just decided to rotate it and have the image fit into the file size so what are we gonna do well I actually wanted to change the color fill of the cat itself right now uh, just because I want to go for a more saturate, uh, desaturated look. Not only will it fill, fit in with the rest of the scene, as you can see the only really bright colored thing in the object that I haven't done is that white car roof on the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm also going to tweak the hue and I want to go for this, this like, I guess it's beige or tan color that, um, the cat that I currently have is I just think like a little bit more earthy would make sense here so a couple things to look for when drawing is shadows cast shadows here we don't have direct light 
uh, a direct light source like the sun it's covered by a lot of clouds it's an overcast which actually makes things easier in a way because you'll just shade things that um, are meant to be shade like let's say the ear holes which won't get light um, so you can kind of just use common sense and not worry about too much about like rim lighting and all that um, before we get into more of the coloring process though I think I'm gonna create a new layer on top of our cat I'm gonna go to our sketch layer and I'm gonna lower its opacity uh, by quite a bit down to 17 percent thereabout just so it's not in the way and now for the cat layer I'm gonna grab a, like a darker brown color to replace the current sketch outline with uh, with a newer one and for this newer sketched outline I want to establish a little bit more detail I want the form to start making sense and fix up any minor mistakes which I may have uh, done now the reason that I'm doing a slightly darker color is one so that it's easier to distinguish the change that I've done I could obviously use the same exact orange but uh, this darker color as you can see um, well as you'll be able to see in just a little bit I can quite easily edit the color to match the rest of uh, the cat so I am not at all worried about it doesn't you can even do pink if you want um, it doesn't matter what color is chosen here essentially we just want to touch up all the corners the areas that are really sharp you want them to be a little bit more fuzzy I might even end up blurring the cat just a bit but um, at the same time I also don't really want to do that since you just get rid of detail <laughs> so if you spent a long time adding detail to your piece um, it makes little sense to smear it blur it and besides the buildings you have to look for objects a uh, similar distance away and how they're lit and how in focus they are and according to those objects you want to try to match up whatever you're painting on top of them now I do want to mention that I really dislike photo bashing in general um, and I wouldn't qualify this as photo bashing because I'm not mixing photos and uh, creating you know complete scenes I see a lot of artists on like our art station on YouTube it's pretty popular I had to unfollow it because 90% of their artwork was photo bashing and the reason why I dislike it so much is a lot of a lot of uh, newer artists that do it make huge mistakes in uh, when it comes to things like um, perspective and especially things like uh, lighting and that's one problem of m trying to mix two photos is you'll often have completely different light sources or direction of light sources and even if you do a little bit of like creative tweaking it it'll never look quite right and I just yeah they, they don't do it for me so I figure you know if you can if you have a cool idea example you take a picture of a light bulb and you want to design a little house inside of it while it's floating on the water or something I've seen a photo bash photo like that uh, the best way to do it in my opinion is to actually paint it not only do you get practice from trying to understand what makes you know what makes the scene the way it is in terms of light and shadows and colors but not only that but you also just get better at painting uh, so that's that's my little that's my two cents so here we've colored in the cat I have his ears folding backwards a little bit I may have to change that just because it looks like his head is backwards yeah let's change that I'm gonna undo this I'm gonna grab the brown color the lighter brown color then let's go back to the darker color and I will just have the ears folding inwards a little bit I think it might not make much sense anatomically I'm not sure I don't have my cat here right now to inspect him but I'll just uh, play along with that and I think that's fine so for this darker brown I can grab this darker brown first thing I want to do is actually just merge down 
I think the line art is fine if it's merged. Make sure we alpha lock the layer. Again, to do that, you swipe your finger across to the right. And we're going to grab a, a bigger brush. As you can see, uh, I can tweak the opacity at least a little bit by, by lightly pressing down. But I'm using this darker color, this darker brown, to um, place some shadows in the shadow areas, in the darker areas. So the underside of the head, uh, things like, um, you know, to give an emphasis of the curvature of the legs, you can go ahead and use some of this darker color. Now I don't want the hairs to be as visible as I normally would do on some other cats just because if this thing is that massive um, realistically the hair wouldn't be you know tree trunk sized so I think this is an okay uh, compromise another thing to keep in mind is to make a giant object seem giant is you sometimes actually need to draw very detailed and what I mean is hmm so here's what I'm wondering why doesn't this part doesn't color in fully and I think that's because well I'm actually not sure why that thing is staying a darker color even though I am drawing over it I'm thinking it's because I don't have because of some transparency stuff, but I guess that's not really the case. Oh, here's what it is. It's the uh, sketch layer. Well, that was, yeah. I guess that's something you also want to do is turn off the sketch layer, at least temporarily, when you're going in and coloring. I learned that, uh, not the hard way, but I could have made some mistakes there. Hopefully it doesn't mess anyone else up. So again, we're using the lighter color, dropping it in, and uh, in terms of detail, what I was talking about is, let's say you want to make a giant and you want him kind of cute like the octopus that I have in the other image. Sometimes you have to create an eye that's, you know, roughly the size of, of this, you know, like a small face on a giant body uh, will often be the difference between, you know, having a giant, I guess that's believable, or in terms of scale realistic and then say you know something that has eyes that are you know four stories tall so that that's a bit of a subjective thing though you know obviously you can make whatever you want and uh, in terms of you know really realism or not it doesn't really matter it's again all down to what your initial idea was I'm just uh, trying to explain what ways I normally do it. These drawings, I don't try to be as realistic as possible because um, not only is that really hard and time consuming, but you also you also um, kind of lose a little bit of the charm. You know, it's it's about it's about uh, at least for me, it's about getting a positive reaction from somebody. You know whether that's making making them happy or just showing them something that they may not necessarily have seen before, and that's even even the idea with this cat is you know he's trying to play with his toy and it's a whole building across, so you can imagine that he would have to skip to get there. Another another thing that I could potentially add is like claw marks on the building, you know, to show that to climb up to the building he had to scratch a couple windows. And uh, to him, it may be an innocent scratch, but because of how large he is, it would be devastating to a city. So little things like that and, and how, how these creatures would interact with our world, I think are, is what makes this so fun for me. Now, you know, you might get the purists or whatever you want to call them, those grumpy people that I used to be, where it's like, well, that's cheating. You're starting from a photo. Well, not really. You know, what is, well, what am I trying to prove? I'm not trying to prove that, uh, that I can, that I can draw a city. It doesn't, it's regardless of, 
you know, starting from scratch or not, I'm not applying for a job that requires me to be able to paint beautiful landscapes. If that was the case, you definitely don't want to showcase your landscape painting ability uh, through, say, a photo that you've added a tree to. But even then, arguably, it might show, you might be able to show what you started with. So for this cat, I'm going to give him at least some sort of pattern along his fur. We'll just have a darker area that runs along his back and then I think his tail will go lighter. And I, I still feel like the color is very brown. I want to I want to neutralize it a bit more. I want more grays. If you guys can hear that, that is a vacuum. I apologize, but you know, cleaner is going to clean. Um, so and by cleaners, I mean my mom. I don't, it's not like I'm hiring maids or anything. Um, anyways, so as I was saying, I want a more subtle color, something to match the buildings almost, something to match the atmosphere of the sky. And this orange just stands too, it just stands out too much. It wouldn't, that's not how it would look in real, in real life. And then you might say, well, how do you know how it looked in real life? Well, I'm just using, you know, the best of my ability from seeing Godzilla and other movies where things were really big. It just doesn't seem like that's how it would work. Again, to change the hue, we hit the adjustments tab, go down to the hue saturation. We can dump the saturation quite a bit. We can make the cat darker. Now, Here's an another here's another and really important thing to do when working on paintings like this is from time to time you'll want to lower the opacity and you want it quite a bit low. So the reason I'm doing this is if you look closely, we have areas which are darker. Let me go onto a new layer for this so I can highlight it quite easily for you. So you have areas which are darker and then areas which are lighter. That is the fill of the cat not um, basically having a little bit of sky showing up through it because this is drawn on top right you know you can't realistically layer it since the house is on a flat layer so to fix this you can let's duplicate the layer just in case we do a little bit more erasing than we intend to you can grab an eraser drop it down in size to get really precise and uh, erase as much of the the thick cat features as possible. Here's a little, I don't know, a pipe that I missed. So now I erase these and you see there's a couple highlighted areas um, between some of these cracks now. So what I need to do is switch back to well, I'm already on the cat layer. I need to up the opacity, unlock the cat layer, and I need to manually redraw new building edges. Now, avoid drawing on the building as much as possible because you're going to want to potentially put that on a separate layer. And the reason that you would have the cat separate from the building on top of him is if you just saw, I went back and I color hued and I adjusted the color of the cat. And if I have colors of the building in that same, on that same layer, they're also going to be adjusting. So all of a sudden, the colors that you used to fix any mistakes that uh, were seen from the building are going to be changing colors. And they're no longer going to match the buildings in the photo. So keep those on a separate layer. And let me do that right now just to demonstrate to you what I mean. So a completely new layer on top of sketch layer, on top of everything, grabbing the house colors, the building colors, and going in and creating a new edge. And it's fine if you, if you go out outside the bounds of the real building a little bit, you know, you can add your own elements just because you have so much reference to work from and the reference that I'm obviously talking about is the building itself it's right there you have all this color to pick you have all these different tools that you can um, you know try to copy over like the little antennas or something you know grab a black color or something and 
you know what I mean you don't obviously that doesn't look too good but uh, there you go we fixed a little edge let's go along here I'm gonna spin the camera around so that I've got a good angle it's very important for me to draw in strokes which I am comfortable with now we go and grab some of this gray color up here and as you can see I'm adding lines to the building it's not even it's not even in the original photo but who cares who's gonna notice right that's kind of like the idea is you can manipulate the photo in whatever way you'd want just to suit what it is that you are trying to paint so here I see some of the missing cat tail whenever I'm drawing on the cat layer make sure that you switch to the cat layer and again it's very important because if you are going to be adjusting colors you are going to run into issues now we got to go back to the building layer and it's a little bit of back and forth nothing hard though right this is you know been minutes of of work okay here we go continuing the cat stuff here all right we've got we've got a base for the cat I am I'm fairly happy with uh, where we're at right now let's go ahead and highlight the top of the paws just a little bit make sure you lock the layer after you're done painting on the building stuff so you don't add anything you wouldn't want we are still missing an eye so let's go ahead and add an eye for that we can grab a darker brown to get the socket started the outer rim of the dark the dark it looks like eyeliner cats kind of have that but we'll want to go even darker and if we want to make the eye reflective or believable looking we can grab some of this background or the cat's skin color and drop it onto the other opposite side of the eye then we can grab some of the sky color and start mixing it in to the eyeball to get it to get it to start blending with everything it's like the more surrounding colors you incorporate and use um, in your painting the more believable it becomes the more it starts to blend together all right here we go just trying to incorporate the eye a little bit I want to make the eyeball not seem like it's looking at us and I think my way of doing that will be to first of all get rid of the sketch layer hide it for now grab some of this highlight color I don't think it's possible I think I need to change the eye shape because we have this eye shape that makes it seem like it's it's looking towards us but what we need to do is give it more of a more of a arrow if that makes sense so what we'll do is an arrow and less of the actual eyeball will be visible instead we're gonna grab this darker brown and fill in the inside so little things like this still take me a lot of time you know trying to figure stuff out that's why whenever I'm doing tutorials, you know, I'd recommend that you guys don't copy it exactly. I understand that's more comfortable to get a feel for the technique and you start, you know, seeing things through my eyes in a way, but realistically, it just comes down to, you know, you just follow the rules, follow the idea and then uh, get your own results and then work from there. So okay even this is a little bit too extreme we need we need a straighter line so that's I wanna say better but not really let me grab some of the highlight color Just do a little. Kind of like how that looks. 
where you can't even see the pupil, you just see the little soft membrane of the eyeball. And then instead of anything else, we just give the cat some whiskers. So I'm gonna drop a new layer and then put it behind the cat. And uh, for the whisker, hmm, I'm trying to think what would be a reasonable tool to use just because I want to I want to be able to do it in one simple stroke I wonder why this one okay that's really thick that's not what we need Fine, I guess the round brush will just have to do. But as you can see, whenever I drop it in size, it starts to act really weird. It gets all pixely. Let's see if we can use one of the, pen. yeah, I guess the pen tool will, will suffice. Okay, now what I want to do is shrink these in size, turn off the little magnet tool so that I can be more precise with what I'm doing. I'm going to lock this layer, grab a black color. Now I did draw the whiskers on a separate layer, and again that's because we want to be able to edit them without affecting the rest of our cat. So I'm going to... I'm going to lower their opacity a little bit. I just kind of want to skew them somewhat. Let's get the opacity up just a little bit. And I'm going to grab a big soft eraser. I erased them a little bit too aggressively. I think something like that is okay. We need to put them lower. Yeah, something like that is fine. Now, I'll leave them on a separate layer just for now. I will, what did I want to do? I want to play around with the color of the cat just a bit more. But to do that, I think I'm going to use a new layer. And then I'm going to hit the cat, select its contents, and then go to this new layer. And on this new layer, let's try something. I want to I want to grab a lighter gray and switch the layer style, go under contrast and let's hit overlay. And here I'm going to use this lighter gray, as you can see drawing in overlay mode applies whatever version of the color you have selected to the current uh, color underneath. Um, and in this case a light gray basically just means apply a lighter, you know, brown. If I go over say a green that's in the same layer it'll apply a lighter green so it's a, a quicker way of applying a light color I can really get some uh, fast shading done with this technique just like that let's get the tail tail end done there now switch back over to our cat grab some of this layer here and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna blend a few of these imperfections I'm not gonna spend too much time on it so that the tutorial won't be too long and not only that but why not you know it's it's I mean why would I it's a far away object 
detail is somewhat important but ultimately you know you can put in as much time as you want into it and I don't have that much time all right this is uh, part one I will be back with part two and we will finish the painting then thanks for watching guys